beautiful people of the internet. It is thundering and lightning outside. And I'm going to be answering another question. I initially kind of threw an initial, um, initial, initial uh, uh, response to it. And I thought to myself, no, this is actually a good question. And so I wish to dive in further. So Trevor Fielding asks, question for you guys. Is truth something that's unchanging? Or is truth an individual thing? For example, if two people believing in different things, are they both right? Or is one right and the other ultimately believing in a false truth? Uh, my initial thought on this is that this simplifies a high, highly complicated situation. Um, truth in itself, I would say, yes, there is kind of like a finite point of, of um emission, but it incorporates uh, far more um, complex in, uh, um, instances to define it. Um, it, I would say, manifests itself in many different ways, and thus it may look like truth, um, it, it, like truth can be this ambiguous thing. So for instance, let's say, the truth can be beautiful, the truth can be strong and powerful. Um, the truth can be fun or terrifying. Um, the truth may be practical. And so what I'm doing here is I'm describing a horse, for instance. So if you, if you, if you put a horse in front of 20 different people, you're going to find out that different people um, respond to different characteristics of the horse. So, for instance, someone might say, wow, that's a very beautiful horse. And while one person, you know, okay, maybe it's a beautiful horse, but wow, that's actually a very powerful and strong horse compared to other horses. And one per another person might go, you know, that's, you know, okay, but it's actually a, you know, it looks like a fun horse to ride or, or you know, I, I don't have horses, so I don't know how other things, but I, I've seen horses be quite characteristic and, and, and goofy, kind of like dogs in a way. Um... And maybe um, someone finds joy in comparing this horse to other horses and finding maybe favor in this horse in different categories. Um, and some may also see uh, the, the horse as a very good practical tool to plow or ride in the mountains or whatever. They, but they, yeah, they see the practical favor of the horse, maybe not so much of the other things. Um, and whatnot. So it's, in the end, we're all just describing a horse, but the horse is manifesting, well, the horse's characteristics is, is, or is a certain characteristics of itself as being attracted to by different people, and different people have a special eye to recognize the truth of that horse, and each one of them is completely true. But we're still talking about a single entity, a horse. And so with the original question, I want to get back to it, um, is truth an individual thing or is truth something that's, un or is truth unchanging? So I would say truth in itself does not change, but it manifests itself differently um, throughout time, um, especially so if you observe how people change based on the environment that they are grown up in. So for instance, I grew up and I grew up in a very technological era, but if you were to send me back a hundred years or even a thousand years ago, my um, truth will manifest itself differently, and I will recognize certain elements of truth in a different way. But the outcome is still the same, so that's what's most important. So either even though that the truth might be manifested differently based on my individual upbringing in my social sphere, my social environment, the kind of people I'm around um, allows me to see certain truths. The truth itself is not going to change only part of it. Sorry, I'm kind of going around in circles, but only part of only a new part of it or an old part of it is going to be extracted. Um, but in the end, that truth is going to affect me how it always has affected everyone in the future in the past. Well, actually, no. I think you can also reveal new elements of truth with different, um, um, I guess, times and eras. So I think, so for instance, in our era, 
<laughs> more like lounging. Um, in our era, we're, we're highly technologically advanced, and so it allows us to explore certain elements of truth that people back then could not have. But people back then lived a very different life, which then allowed them to explore truth that we could not, or at least like people that are highly in, in highly advanced civilizations, they would not be able to explore and experience truth in the same way. And so it manifests itself differently to different people. That doesn't mean it's a different truth. It's just they're seeing a different side of the horse. Um, and how, but even, which was interesting, it gets even more complex because, um, let's see here. So how different, so two people grow up in, a thousand years ago and two people grow up a thousand years later so now let's say and um those both being different people are going to recognize truth differently and let's say maybe um, one from each side are is similar but because they grew up in different, different times they're going to see another side of truth even though they might be people that would recognize a similar element but because of their social environment and and whatnot and the demands of their own life um they're going to see truth in a in a, in a slightly different manifestation um so um that kind of goes to show like truth being able to stand the test of time and whatnot and that's and that's when you start to observe like um again the out the outcome the, what kind of outcome are we looking for what is the point of truth what's the value of truth and I th well, it's different for all different people. Like, for me, it could be a reason to live, a reason to do things. So, for instance, why be kind to people? Now, some people might just say it's a very good social um, structure to do because we benefit from being kind from each other and in, and in trade instead of being barbaric and whatnot. Okay, but then is there a greater you know meaning behind it or not? Or not? I don't know. Um, I mean. I would say yes, but it's more than just survival. We're not just trying to survive, but we can truly live. And I guess that truth um, gives us those kinds of answers. So I don't know. So it's kind of like to justify what is the point of, of, of trying to find this absolute truth. But, and again, I would say it's, it's in the value of finding its consequence and how it manifests itself differently to different people over time, different kinds of people over time, um, but it doesn't mean it changes. And so um, I would say in different religions, I would say that there are, those religions are recognizing certain elements of truth that they, that they want to emphasize on. Um, but then I would, I would think that the problem is, is that they, 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 att they attach themselves to the part that they most value, but then they don't recognize the importance of the other ones, but that's where other religions might focus on and, and then find its importance and emphasize on them. And so I would say the ultimate truth would be able to um, take all of those and see their value, but I, I will say humanity cannot recognize all those truths because we are limited by our own recognition of how, of what we see in truth in the environment that we are brought up so we're only going to see a man a certain manifestation of it and if we only grab to that truth then we're you know we're limiting ourselves um to the ultimate truth and so so i guess it was taken for religion if there is a one true religion then that religion or belief or whatever you want to call it um, will challenge everyone all the time because it harbors all elements of the full truth, which we ourselves may not be able to fully comprehend because that, that truth is not man-made. It is something that we discover that is beyond ourselves and it manifests itself to us. And so then um, a, re a religion that is strictly man-made is going to be limited to only certain truths that humanity um, uh, attracts themselves to. Um, I would say that, so, I mean, so people know probably by now that I'm, I'm Christian, but I will say that there are certain Christian 
categories of people that attract to certain elements of truth and they hold on to it, but they end up missing out on the fuller picture. Um, so some people really love to serve. Some people really love to share the gospel. Some people really love to learn. And some people really love to be encouraging. And if they only hold on to those individual parts, they're not going to experience the fuller um, truth, I guess. And so it's really important to hear out the other person and recognize the truth that they do have, because I would say that every single person does have a manifestation of the truth. But then there's a really interesting um, kink that we have is that, now depending on where you're coming from, there's chaos, there's sin, there's disorder, there's, there's something that doesn't allow that truth to fully form in a positive state. We, it can be our, our, both our greatest strength and our greatest weakness, and it can both build up and destroy. And um, that kind of fallen nature um, takes away from the benefit of that truth and actually turns it into something terribly ugly. So then people that, um, so two different people that see two different truths can actually end up hating each other with the same, um, well, excuse me, they, they are given truth from the same truth source, but the different manifestations of it, it um, gets contorted in a fallen state and they end up warring against each other, <laughs> trying to <laughs> get the, eh, um, end up warring against each other. And so it creates this strange paradox where it almost seems like these two truths can never coexist, but it's because um, the fallen nature of man, I guess to simplify it, um, has has contorted the manifestation of truth so that it actually ends up harming people that have a different recognition of, of truth. So yeah, that was just a lot of <laughs> stuff, but really great topic. Uh, so I really wanted to cover it and, and um, it's, it's interesting, very interesting. And I, I think it's a far more complicated issue, but also very simple because in the end, What's the what's the benefit? What's the re, what's the outcome of, of 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 observing this ultimate truth? What does it do between you and me and me and other people when we when we interact with each other? Um, what is it supposed to do? It creates this unity, hopefully, because all these truths should stand up, stand st st <laughs> should bring us to the ultimate truth when we recognize that. A piece of truth is all in us. What is that horse? My personal claim, as all y'all know, is that this is the Christian God. That's not everyone else's belief. That's fine. Um, then I just I always want to challenge people, and even when I challenge myself, like, is you know, where are your truths leading up to? And does it encourage you to combat? the quiet side of you, the, the side that no one else is, no one else sees. You might be a great person in front of everyone else, but who are you really when the doors are shut, when you think what you're doing doesn't really affect anyone, but it really does because in the end, what you do in secret ends up undermining that truth that you have and you actually start to distort it. You start to distort your perspective and you start to degrade other people that also have truth and your truth ends up being weaker. So um, it very much matters about who you are in private and the justification of being upright in private. Where does that come from? How do we combat that? And I would say through Christ. I mean, you can try on your own. It's not very easy because <laughs> for some reason we actually enjoy um, misery in a way. I mean, I wouldn't, cause it sounds strange, but it's, it's something that we can control. We can control that, um, the, the, that side, but then also we start to lose control when something in us drives or yearns for some kind of action or thought process that actually is self-destructive. makes no sense. 
but it's because I would say we are fallen from the ideal state that we were intended for, and so we're in this constant battle of morality to yearn or strive for what is good and it's beneficial for us and the people around us, but then also what what tastes good, <laughs> the sugar of life, <laughs> um, the the stuff that we were not supposed to experience by other people's actions, our own actions and thought processes that we weren't supposed to um, um, be, pra be practicing, which then end up harming ourselves, then starts harming people around us, and it creates this terrible sphere. <laughs> so, yeah, this turned into a long video, but um, let me know in the comment sections below, what do you think? Is truth something that's unchanging? Is it, or is truth an individual thing? And whatever other thoughts that you guys have, I'd like to know in the comment section below. And I'll see you in another video, another life. You never know. ASMR. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're wearing headphones. All right. Peace out.